Welcome back from the break. You're still watching Life Stories. Today on the show, we have your gold medalist, Stephen Kipotich. As his dream drew closer to reality, Kipotich was faced with another challenge. He had to change the race for his own good, but for a long time, his body did not respond. His graph was steadily going down. 2010, I took part in Kenyan track and field meetings where I won my hip. <laughs> now there, it was giving me some, some sense that there is something, mm. you see. Mm. Uh, then now my coach picked interest. He picked interest, this, this person is serious, this person needs to go to the camp and train. Mm. But when I was taken to the camp, mm. things were very hard. Mm. But also things were hard for me I could endure. At the end of the day, that is uh, 2010, I talked with my coach. He always told, he, he told me, he told me that, uh, that I like you so much. Now I asked him why, that you, I have identified you as a cooperative person and someone, patience. Sometimes ask me, do you also go to church? I told him, for me, I ever stand, I go to, I go for prayers. Catholic Church. Mm. He told me that you just be patient. 2010, I didn't fly, I didn't travel anywhere. In, uh, I didn't travel to major competitions. Mm. Things were very difficult. Mm. You know, with this, this running, you don't, you don't run all the time uh, going out or doing uh, or performing well. Sometimes the graph goes down, sometimes the graph goes up. But now when he told me like that, for me I didn't even mind. I said, if the so coach now the, loves the me. the graph was done? The graph was somewhere at the uh, ground. Your form was not as yeah, good. Yeah, I was not in good form. Mm -hmm. Then he, I told him, no coach, I, I want now to run a marathon. Mm -hmm. He told me, if you, if you are focused and mm -hmm. determined, mm -hmm. you can do it. And your patience. But I, mean, I told him, no, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Now he started, he changed the program. Most of the people told me that, why are you going for marathon? Mm -hmm. I told them that it is my choice. I've decided to do, so leave me alone. But they told me, okay, you can do it. Uh, so many things contributed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can train, you don't have even a coin to buy a water or a, a biscuit, just mm -hmm. a mere biscuit to eat. Mm -hmm. But uh, all in all you endure, I was enduring. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, you know, there is, there is nothing just comes mm. without God. Mm. When, I, when things happen, I always talk to God. I ask to God, why, 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 do you, why do you, like, what, what, God, why don't you put me in a safe place? Mm. Back home, Kipotich's parents and family had to make peace with the absence of their beloved son. They resorted to praying for him. Stephen, what was your family's attitude towards your talent? <laughs> Yeah, my, Athletics. my parents at first, when I dropped from school, they were not happy about me. Mm. But uh, when, so when they were not happy about me, that's when I, I went to, to train in Bupa, so that mm. to keep away from them, so that we don't collide. But you said they could not afford, so why were they not happy that you resorted to doing athletics? My parents, let me tell you that they were encouraging me so much to, to run and study. But now when I fall from school, then they told me, then they were, I knew, I knew they are not happy. That's why I, I decided to go, to keep away from them. For them but they wanted you to study. Because I remember even when I was still young, they could give me some money to go and have something in the competitions. Mm. Can give me something small, they afford like 1,000 shillings, mm. uh, So when I shift to Kenya, mm. sometimes they ask me that, why, why, you know, now the people in the community, they are going to the university, they are finishing senior six. And I told them, one, one day, I may be a surprise to your eyes. Mm. And uh, that's what I see, it has really happened. Tell me about the moment when you qualified for the Olympics. Uh, like uh, for marathon, mm. since we don't have so many competitors in Uganda, mm. so uh, I was, uh, my manager invited me to Netherlands, where mm. I ran uh, a race in the Netherlands, and uh, I pushed the uh, mm. uh, Satins World Times. Mm. That was last year when I when I took part in marathons, and my federation in Uganda, mm. Uganda Athletic Federation, mm. identified me as 
as one of the qualif automatic qualifiers mm -hmm. because others didn't make up to that the limit they went. Mm -hmm. So uh, they they offered me a ticket first to go to, for one, uh, to go to Korea, mm -hmm. where I finished, but the time was very poor. Mm -hmm. And this year again, I, I appealed this year, mm -hmm. and I ran, I equalized my record. Two, two hours, seven minutes and 50 seconds. Mm -hmm. Now that's when I was given now full ticket mm -hmm. for Olympics. After his win in Netherlands, he qualified for the 2012 Olympics in London. The little known Kipritich came home to Uganda where neither the press nor the public gave him an inch of attention. Yes, I say it is true, people did not give him attention because I was not known. You know, uh, you can't give attention to something which you have not seen, you have not, people have not started talking, talking about. Mm. I think the attention of the people were low. Mm. But uh, after my colleagues failed to get to pick the medals, mm. then, uh, they, and then uh, you had, they said that we all ha still have one hope. Mm. And the people who had hope with me were very few people. Mm. Keep like at Benjamin, he had hope. Uh, my coaches had hope and also my local manager. Mm. That's one is I call him local because we stay in, in, uh, from Uganda. It's mm. Nagaba, good for Nagaba. Mm. He had a hope. Mm. And that, that evening, someone told me that uh, one journalist called Bahakama, Bahakama or Bahakama? Bahakama. Uh, Bahakama. Uh, that he wrote an article uh, that evening that uh, I have hope that we are going to get a medal tomorrow. Uh, and uh, indeed it happened. So uh, now uh, I call myself uh, discovered. Mm. Mm. Then uh, before I was undiscovered. Now uh, what I could also say that is that uh, now since I'm discovered, mm. uh, I don't uh, need a lot of attention from people to attend. We need to go deep the ground mm. to find the undiscovered ones mm. so that uh, they also reach that level. So tell me about London. When you reached, there was, what was the feeling? Were there any challenges you faced? Let me start from Saturday. Then the next day was a competition. Mm -hmm. So Saturday, uh, first of all, let me tell you, there was a lot of food in London. Mm -hmm. You can eat at any time you want. Mm -hmm. So don't ask me, what, what were you eating there? We, we had a lot of types of food, over thousands of mm -hmm. types. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, of a, of a thousand, you, ca you can't fail to get uh, your favorite meal. Mm -hmm. For me, I got my ugali, mm -hmm. I got my rice, and also the local foods. Mm -hmm. I, I eat here at home. Mm -hmm. So I was very comfortable, I was very free. Mm -hmm. And the following day, I, ha I had to wake up very early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Before I slept, I talked to God. I had, I had enough credit to talk to God, so I mm -hmm. talked to God for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And in the morning, I talk. In the morning, the credits was very low, so I talked to him like uh, one minute, two minutes. Two minutes was only enough, mm -hmm. and I get up. I start my preparation for the Olympics, mm -hmm. for the competition. Now, now already I was in the Olympics, so it's not Olympics again. It's for the competition. Mm -hmm. So I started now preparing. I ran. I, I was the first person in the bus mm -hmm. to go. I think everything came fast, fast because mm -hmm. I was the first person to wake up in the morning. First person to eat, first person to be in the bus, mm. and first person to be in the Olympic. Um, you were even the first person to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> no, there were so many people in the, that night. I, I think I was the last person. But you told me you were the first person to eat. Yeah, no, early morning. <laughs> okay. Because I did everything in the morning, fast, fast, fast. Oh, okay, that was a joke. Yeah. The marathon you won had strong forces, like two-time world marathon champion Abel Kirui and his brother from uh, Kenya Steel, Wilson Kipsang, Kutbat Nyasango from Zimbabwe, among others, you know, were you not intimidated? These are people who knew what they were doing. I did not have to fear them. Mm. Uh, being a world champion, mm. okay, so many people were fearing, but mm. for me, I knew I was in the right place at the right time. Mm. Uh, Wilson Kipsang is, 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 almost, is the second fastest. Mm. Uh, in the in the in the race, mm. and that one, all that thing to contribute to my my race. I knew I was there to run and to win. Ever uh, there is somewhere in the Bible says that uh, 
all athletes, the fastest athlete doesn't win. Luck comes to every athlete, everyone. So for me, I think it was my day. So as we were losing almost every race, so many races we failed to even come in the first five, and you have, you're preparing for a race, what was going through your mind? It, what, I, what I had in my mind, because everyone was running his own race, mm. keep sure running his own race, mm. uh, keep lagging, mm. and others, mm. and other ladies also. Uh, for me, I was uh, I was not happy about they were running uh, about they are running, mm. and you know as I told you that so many things contributed to the failure. Mm. Not that they are, they are serious, but they lack where to train. Mm. For me, I was only waiting my turn to come. Because I, I, I have to wait for my turn. Mm. And when time came, mm. I did my turn mm. to save Uganda. Like, uh, I, think, I think we are the winners, the Ugandan team, in the whole world. Because we, we entered uh, 12 athletes and we came back with one medal. How did you feel when you realized that you're in the lead of the most prestigious race in the world, the Olympics marathon? You know? You're looking at uh, the finish line and it's a yard away and all these people are behind you and it's coming to reality that you're winning. Mm -hmm. So what came to your mind when you realized you're actually in the lead? In the competition, in that competition, mm -hmm. some journalists came to me and asked me, what is in your mind? I told them that uh, I'm preparing my mind to get the medal in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. They asked me which medal, I didn't tell them. I told them, provided I got the three, that's, mm -hmm. that's full stop. Mm -hmm. So when we are in the competition, when we are in the competition in London, mm. when I get that chance, when I got that chance, uh, after a certain a certain kilometer we are we are three, mm. so I there I mark my dream right mm. that now I think I'm safe. Mm. Then after a certain mark, something came into my mind that mm. no, it is not only that one. Mm. I need to go for more. Mm. That's why you saw me. Uh, coming to the finish, get the flag. I, I saw you running while looking back. Yeah, no, I... You're running yeah. and you're looking back. What was the problem? <laughs> I wanted to see clear, that mm. I'm, have I cleared the back? <laughs> so I could keep looking the back. Because mm. the athletes I was running together with, they are strong athletes. Mm. We don't know what is, what, what is, what is in their minds. So a nice smile and uh, a little congratulatory sign as he came through the tape. It was a very fine run indeed, and Kipritic is the Olympic champion, 2012, the final event on the athletics program for these Olympic Games, which have been immensely successful. In fact, there was a screen towards the finish line. As I was leading, it was showing me and showing, he was showing Abel Grui, as if he's very near. That's why I, I tried to look behind to see where this person. And I'm glad you checked. I checked, yeah. <laughs> so when I checked, you. when I checked, uh, <laughs> I saw the flag. Mm. Now I was checking, check, check mm. this way. Also, the front was clear. Oh. So mm. where I was checking was behind. Mm. Yeah, I think it was my worry, but I was not worried. Mm. Before I reached the, the finish line, oh. uh, you know that you know that distance. Mm. Why I looked behind mm. that. That is the most difficult part of the race. Mm. You, you, may, you may fail to finish the race. And you, you are just seeing finishing is just like, mm. like uh, 100 meters. Mm. Most of the athletes fail to, to finish. Mm. Uh, so when I finish the race, I feel very happy. Mm. Mm. You know, I saw you crossing the line yes. with the Ugandan flag uh, yes. streamlined yes. over your head. Yes. And that was a very beautiful thing. <laughs> it was a very mm. emotional moment for mm. so many Ugandans. Mm. Everybody, even those who are not following the race, when they saw somebody who's running, uh, you know, across the finish line, and they're carrying a flag, they said, "Oh, he's Ugandan. He's Ugandan." So who gave you this flag? And the flag, uh, we had a physiotherapist in London mm. from Uganda. And this physiotherapist, he was with a lady from Malawi, as a I told you. Physiotherapist? Yeah, physio. Physio. Oh, physiotherapist. Yeah, physiotherapist. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh -huh. This lady from Malawi, who is running for UK, he mm. was with the. In fact, 
if he, if she saw us as a team Uganda, she's very happy. Mm. She, she she tells us that you people from Uganda you are very good people. Mm. That you are always presenting a very small thing. So he was together with the physiotherapist and and she she uh, she handed over the flag to me as I ran and grabbed the flag. She gave me the flag. She released the flag very fast. So she's not Uganda. She's not a Ugandan. Cross. Let the vehicles move to the other side. He is now a national hero and will always be. His family and elderly parents will definitely say goodbye to poverty, plus his country, Uganda, will have a gold medal to call their own. But that alone is not the story. Unflinching fortitude to achieve goals can take one a long way in life, as Kipotich's story proves. This truly must be the most inspiring story of this generation. Back to chatting with Stephen Kipotich, world champion in the Olympics marathon. So Stephen, yeah. when you landed at the Entebbe airport, you know, you caused harm in this country. People were bursting into tears. People were welcoming you. They could not believe. And you're a star. How does it feel being famous? How does it feel being admired, mm -hmm. being looked up to, having power? Uh, I don't have power yet. It's just you as power. You but do because you have the authority to tell us something about athletics. Ah. <laughs> so how does it feel? You know, uh, when I came back, mm. I arrived at the airport. Mm. I was escaped. I was expecting to come as usual. Mm. You know, I used to just get out, get in. Mm. But when I came there, mm. it was like I had to stop passing mm. at the airport. So which, is, which was very good and very happy about it. Mm. Even the ban. Mm. The ban I was welcomed well mm. to the airport with the ban from Uganda prison, mm. which was very good and I've never seen before. Even most of the people that I've never seen before, I've never had before, all of them never been played. It is one of the big uh, big people in the government. Mm. If you can allow me first to take you back to the to the closing ceremony mm. where they sang three national three stanzas of the national language. Mm. For me I saw that they are going to sing only one as usual. Mm. So when they when they sang the next one, mm. oh I was almost shedding tears. What has happened? Because mm. I knew what it means in our national language when they play the three. Mm. Then it was I knew there is something. I knew this medal is very important. Mm. So back to the back to the country, people mm. were very happy. Mm. Uh, like uh, it's like the queen, you know, when the queen came, when Elizabeth mm. came to Uganda, 2007, very mm. many people turned up. Mm. So, but uh, when I saw the people in Kampala town, it's mm. more than a queen mm. because the queen people knows the queen is there. Mm. And, uh, people are very happy about me because he, they knew he is our hero. Mm. I've promoted them, mm. you see. Mm. Now, everywhere in the world, they know Uganda.